so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I am Michael fucking Rainey here with Cal Donjala. Hello, Michael. Hello, everyone. Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Hey, Jake. Jeff Simmons. Welcome back, boys. We doing it. We are doing it. Look at us. Look at that. Just cracked open a cold beer. Mm. Little Stinkers podcast. Bet you Mike's about to crack open a hot fart. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> That's us. Oh, my God. Did you fart? I didn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought you had a slogan on deck Must for be us. my upper lip. <laughs> Our slogan is oh, Must be your upper lip <laughs> <laughs> Boys how are we feeling tonight Great I'm feeling alright Feeling good Yeah I'm kind yeah. of bummed man Yeah still got the uh, the end. And we're not even Still bummed about the Phillies losing Game 7 last night uh, And then I was about to say Earlier That we were the Challenger explosion NL <laughs> Eastern champs, but we weren't no. even the fuck. We were not nope. the champion of anything no. in this fucking series in this season. And now DS, right? Division, but that's not like yeah. yeah, the fucking Nintendo DS champions. Way to fuck. But go the to. Braves <laughs> won the regular season for that, so I yeah. don't think that counts as us. There's nothing that you yes. get. So yeah. we didn't get fucking shit except for shirts. Ajita. <laughs> that's what the fuck we got. <laughs> I got fucking tricked into tipping a bartender three fifty last night for one fucking beer. Those, they those get little you. screens, man. You get nervous yeah. the first time. You're like, I don't want her to see me hitting custom tip one dollar. And then the second time you do it, I was like, I want, I want her to see me putting in fifty fucking cents. <laughs> do you actually <laughs> say it as my, you tip? Like, and then I sign my, um, I draw a middle <laughs> finger as my signature. Damn, Furman, you seem like a generous tipper. Yeah, it's more out of just dumbness than anything. Uh, like the other day, I ordered. I got a beer and a wine. It was sixteen bucks. I think I tipped seven bucks. Whoa, that's an easy to put twenty down. Yeah, no, I it was two separate transactions for each thing. So they had the the screen, and I just hit the middle <gasps> button on both. They fucking got me. You got a glass of wine with a touch screen? Yeah, it was at like a a farm. They got them. Oh yeah, now. yeah, yeah. You now they got those touch screens yeah, at the farms. Electricity has finally reached the farmland, the wineries, <laughs> the vineyards. Were you at yeah. a vineyard? I was not. It's a but, place called Cherry Crest Farms. Pretty was that, sick. Was that the one in Lancaster? Yeah, yeah, it is. I heard that they've got the uh, like America's scariest um, Halloween attraction there now, oh, or maybe it's the most popular one or something. Wow. The billboard claimed something that can't be measured, and I believed them. They have an easy 15-minute corn maze that I was stuck in for 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> because you started trying to pop the corn? Yeah, yeah. Sir, <laughs> sir. Can't bring a microwave in here. Jake, I Even had, if it's portable. <laughs> sir, there's no such thing as a portable microwave. I, I had a relative to your experience at the winery. I had a joke that ate shit every time I told it, and I still can't believe it eats shit. Let's hear it. Uh, are you familiar with the movie American History X? Oh, oh God. God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, for the sake of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, all right, uh, Derek, when he, he went to jail for a while, mm -hmm. when fellows go to jail, oftentimes they'll make toilet wine. Do you think if Derek made his own toilet wine, he could market it as Derek Vineyards? What was his last name? Vineyard. Mm-hmm. Bring it back. <laughs> I think you should bring it. I think you should put it in here. You should put it back in the act. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think I will. I can't believe Ooh, that. What did. a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to flip the coin, honestly. Uh, All right. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm fucking pissed at you for that. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of Joker news happening. Not really, but I always like to think there is. Yeah, you fucking won. Here's the deal. We are brokenhearted about the Phillies blowing the fucking National League Championship Series, yeah. but I love baseball so much that I'm not ready to give it up for, yet for the year. You're going to watch the World Series? You can suck my fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking How about? How do you even do that? <laughs> You must be one hell of a hemorrhoid back there. <laughs> uh, as far as the turds of my asshole, it's one, two, three sucks. They're out. 
but um, <laughs> I'm, I had my heart set on another week of baseball. So I'm not watching the World Series, so, but I have to fulfill that week of baseball. So for tonight's stinker, I chose one of baseball's biggest stinkers. <gasps> Whoa. Uh, I bet I know. I bet you do too. Yeah. Uh, you gentlemen familiar with a badass man with beautiful cross blue eyes like our friend here. Did he cross them up? They were naturally crossed, brother. No, they fucking weren't. For they real? were. I'm he was a professional pitcher. <laughs> look at look at a picture of this fucking guy. <laughs> I got to. I'm talking about John Loy Rocker. Louis L O Y. That ain't a name I've ever come I've, across. Yeah, I've never it's, heard that name. There used to be a, a basketball player named Loy Vaught. I think it's a southern name. Hey, this guy looks. Let's get modern. one of him looking down the barrel. Yeah. I can something. Oh wow. Those eyes are He looks like the uh, bad guy in Bad Boys 2 in that picture. Johnny Tapia? Damn, look at that rock and bod. I mean, he stayed in great shape. He was actually on the Mitchell Report, so he did get busted for steroids. You know, a lot of uh, racist bigots can be in good shape. (laughs) (laughs) In fact, many of them are. that guy's jacked, man. They don't call him Little It's. (laughs) They don't run it back? No. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll I'll just tack that on with my Derek Vineyards. Okay. But yeah, John Rocker uh, was a stud reliever for a few years. Like I think it seemed as though he was prominent for much longer than he was just because of how much noise he made during that time period. Uh huh. But um, yeah, he was in the big leagues from 98 to 2003. Damn, that is a short-lived Whoa. career. Yeah. yeah. When, when was most of that uh, noise made? 99. So... Fucking the beginning Pretty of his early career. on, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I wonder if that has a lot to do with why he didn't last too long or if... He says it has more to do with shoulder problems, which I can believe because uh-huh. he was throwing heat. Yeah, he was yeah. 100 miles an hour, right? Close to it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he was born in Statesboro, Georgia. Okay, that adds okay. up for a lot of his behaviors. <laughs> uh, his parents were Jake and Judy. Rocker, Jake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jake, Judy, and John. <laughs> the racist rockers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Dude. Print them up. Let's put them on t-shirts. They could have taken that show on the road. He doesn't look too crossed in that picture. Oh, brother, those eyes are crossed. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't like this. <laughs> no, you have the most beautiful crossed eyes. He's he, he's he, second best. He's got minor league beautiful blue cross eyes. I, Mike, you're warming my heart. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's I think all that one is beautiful. <laughs> this is kind of this was an odd thing that I found out. Um do you ever heard how John Rocker is often the inspiration for Kenny Powers? Yes. I've never heard that. From East no? Down? No, yeah. 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 Like, uh, the show is loosely based on his career and life. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Yeah, and you can see so many of the parallels. I think in the first episode, it was clear when he's, like, taking interviews, and he's like, you mean Jew York? <laughs> He's like, I ain't playing there. I, yeah, so I know nothing about this guy. <laughs> about John uh, Rocker? Hey, yeah, are you yeah. fucking kidding me? You remember serious. this? Uh, yeah. This was like... We're going to go through it. Sports Center fucking uh, oh. news for months. I, I mean, can't wait. He was um, a, a hulking man who was a stud reliever during a time where, where the Atlanta Braves were really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were in the playoffs constantly. They actually went to the World Series. Yeah. They got smoked by the Yankees in 99, but 99 was like his year. Okay. Damn, so he's from Georgia and he got to play for the Braves. That's pretty not, incredible. Not too, yeah, awesome. it's not too yeah. far. Like I think um, Statesboro is closer to Savannah, uh-huh. but still, I imagine it's within a couple of hours of Atlanta, which and has got to be a fucking cool deal. Yeah. If I remember correctly, he would sprint from the bullpen, he would. right? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And he says that like that wasn't even intentional. It's just the first time where he got called out. He, was he just found adrenaline. himself running to the fucking mound. So he kept doing it. I kind of like that. Yeah. That kind of sucks, though. After the first <laughs> you year, have like, to. Yeah, it becomes a news story. Like, fucking fuck, winded for the first four pitchers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would play. Do you remember what song they used to play for him when he came out? Uh, I don't. It ain't coming. I want to rock, rock. I knew it was nice. something to rock. Yeah, I want to rock by Twisted Sister. Dude. Fuck yeah. He seems awesome so far. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, is the I don't think Mike ever thought he wasn't awesome, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so he's racist. That's just, that, that's debatable. I, here's the deal. He's had a lot of black teammates that came out in his support. Okay. A lot of teammates, um, they either seemed tolerant of him or they love him. Okay. It wasn't necessarily this guy was racist. He just 
fucking said what he thought and didn't filter himself in any way. Yeah, there was no filter to anything he said, and he was very uh, clearly honest about his opinions. Okay. And that continued to this day. But related to the Kenny Powers note, he was born in Bullitt County Hospital in 1974. Danny McBride was born in Bullitt County Hospital in 1976. And this is small town Georgia. That's fucking crazy. That's wild. So he must have a real soft spot in Danny McBride's heart. I believe it. Yeah. Wow. If he dedicated a whole fucking show to him. And if if you're only two years apart. Go ahead, Jake. Dude, this is, and he's doing it again with gemstones. Like we talked about. Jim Baker. Jim Baker, yeah. Right. Was Jim Baker from Georgia too? I forget that. I can't, I can't remember that. Um, No, North Carolina. North Carolina, then they ended up in Michigan, I think. And that's where he does all of his uh, shows is North Carolina, so. Yeah. Man, we need to get Danny McBride on the show. Yeah. Maybe I'll start flipping for Danny McBride. (laughs) I flip for the Jokers only. But yeah, they were born in the same fucking hospital, and uh, Rocker was an only child. His parents really loved him. They defended him even through all of his controversy. That's like the white version of Papa was a Rolling Stone. (laughs) Rocker was an only child. (laughs) Rocker was a racist reliever. (laughs) Wherever he left his hat, he swore it was stolen by a black guy. (laughs) You know, I was going to rhyme beaver. (laughs) But that's why you get paid the big bucks. (laughs) Because it ain't always about A, B, rhyme scheme, you know. (laughs) Got to throw a C in there every now and then. You hear about kids that are um, that are groomed to be professional athletes about how. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to word that. That's true. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it a, is. Yeah. I think any anybody um, in 2024 who becomes a professional athlete has likely had to adhere to a strict regimen since the time they were children. Yeah. Yeah. John Rocker said he did something for uh, to improve his baseball um, life most days out of the year, but. Even if that that just included reading about the game, if there's a book about a pitcher he admired, he would count that. But he didn't have like a private progress. coach every no. week or anything like that. And he yeah. would take it upon himself to work out. So as he got older and he progressed in the high school, yeah. his workouts became more and more intense. But mm-hmm. he he never came across as somebody who was just obsessed with being a baseball star. Yeah, he played football, he played basketball, he played baseball. He was just a really good athlete, and it just seems like. He was just so good at all the shit. He was like, all right, I guess I'll keep doing it. In high school, he threw three no-hitters. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, pretty nuts, man. He all, he struggled with control, though, and that was a big thing. Yeah, how many <laughs> how many walks in that game? <laughs> <laughs> fucking 22 walks yeah. in seven innings. It's funny you bring that up because I watched uh, a podcast that he did with a Toronto baseball guy, and the guy is like, all right, so tell me about the three perfect games you threw. He's like, no, there were no-hitters. He's like, they weren't perfect games. So... Pretty upfront, fellow. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And um, yeah, could, I like that about that racist. <laughs> <laughs> Bases loaded every inning. <laughs> <laughs> he initially committed to the University of Georgia, but the Atlanta Braves drafted him in the 18th round of the 1993 draft, just in the off chance that he wasn't going to go to to Georgia. Okay. Wow. And eventually, he was just like, "Fuck it, I'm just going to go play with the Braves." And he played in the minor leagues for five years. He he played throughout. He played for the Durham Bulls. You guys ever see Bull Durham? Yeah. Never seen it, but I've it's a really gr- it's one of the best the baseball movies. I hear Kevin Costner's got a good fucking repertoire of baseball movies. He does. Um, yeah. like for the love of, them, of the right? game, is love incredible. of the game is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He throws a perfect game in that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and it's like the game as he looks back on his life, kind John of. John C. Riley is the catcher. That's right. Uh, yeah, natural. Not that natural. Field of Field of Dreams. Yeah. Bull Durham. Guy, and he was fucking uh, Tin Cup. The guy's got a great swing and a great pitch. Yeah, Kevin Costner's a fella, hell of a fella. He really is, man. But John <laughs> so, Rocker, he played for the Durham Bulls. That was one of the teams. Played for a number of other minor league teams as he progressed through the Atlanta Braves system. He also played winter ball. He played in Puerto Rico, Mexico, and Venezuela, which I didn't know, but I found it interesting because it gave more context to his comments regarding how he feels about foreigners and people his desire to hear people speak English when they come to this country. Because he spent so much time in Spanish speaking countries, not being able to understand the native tongue. No, uh, he says that he took the time to, to learn, learn Spanish, Spanish as, much, as best as he could to assimilate to that culture better. Well, America has no official language, so I agree. So 
I can at least see that perspective more than somebody um, like my dad who just wears <laughs> press one to speak, or why do I have to press one to speak English t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy him the shirt? <laughs> no, I just showed up at his house one day and he had it on. I got a picture of him with it. Matching shirts. How many phone calls is he making that he had to buy the shirt? Dude, I, I took a picture of him and um, I'm pretty sure it's still on my Facebook. But I took a picture of him and uh, you could just tell, you could tell in his eyes that he's realizing like this probably isn't a good shirt to, to be on Facebook with. Yeah, that didn't stop you though, did it? No, it did not. Now, now look at me. But he spent five years in the minors, Jake. May 5th, 1998, he finally gets the call up to uh, pitch for the Braves uh, as a long reliever. 99 is when he really starts to take shape. And he becomes their closer. And during the 99 season, he has 38 saves uh, with a 2.49 ERA, which is pretty fucking good. Mm-hmm. During that year, they also they make it to the World Series. And in the NLCS, they play the Mets. That's important, man, because he has some very strong comments about his feelings toward New York and the people of New York. And that was just from visiting four baseball games against the Mets. Not just for those games. Like, he had, he had been there numerous times. Okay. I think in one of the articles he says he rode the subway in New York like 40 times. And that's, I mean, he's not doing that to get to the game. So he spent time in New York outside of baseball. He strikes me as the kind of guy who wherever he is, like he's going to get around. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to me as the kind of guy that's just going to like lock himself in a house and be yeah. like, I hate this because of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he seems like the kind of guy who's had a lot of life experience and it's like, I fucking hate this. Yeah, He likes to go out and find things to hate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can respect that. It's yeah. just him on the way to one game <laughs> and just kept missing the trades. <laughs> I can't understand any of the system. I'm fucking lost. <laughs> I have to fucking pitch today. I took the A trade, then the B trade. <laughs> but during the NLCS in 1999, there's... Um, a writer named Jeff Perlman, who has wrote a ton of really great sports books. He's probably my, my favorite sports writer. He's the guy that wrote the book Showtime, which inspired the HBO series. Is it the basketball yeah. show that just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he wrote The Bad Guys 1, which is about the 86 Mets. Just really good shit. His most Why recent, is it The Bad the, Guys? Daryl Strawberry? The, oh, the whole team, they were just scumbags. Really? Jose yeah. Canseco, right? No, no, it was um, Dwight Gooden, Daryl Strawberry, yeah. uh, Gary Carter, who was a good guy. Um, Keith Hernandez, Kevin Mitchell, Lenny Dykstra, okay. Mookie Wilson. So all like just rough dudes. That was the Bill Buckner year, right? The it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Jeff Perlman, if you're interested, I would suggest yeah. checking out his books. They're all very entertaining. And he puts out one every few years. The most recent one is one about Bo Jackson, who um, really strikes me as an asshole, so I couldn't get really? too into it. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, it just seemed very unlikable. <clears throat> From like... Just your experience watching Bo Jackson in the media over the years? Or you read the back of the book and you were like, this guy kind of seems like a dickhead? I've spent a lot of time around Bo Jackson and I've learned to hate him, John. <laughs> no, I've listened to the audio book and um, it's hard for me to get in the books where, where the people that I'm learning about, like biographies, if the people don't seem to have many redeeming qualities, hmm. I can't really buy into it. Now, I know that he's done some some really charitable things uh, as he's gotten older. Like for instance, he offered to pay for all the funerals of the kids who died in the Uvalde massacre, which wow. is an incredibly That's generous gesture. Yeah. yeah. But I'm still not getting through that book. That's fine. That's your right. Okay. Thank you. I mean, dude, that's one thing our, the, this generation now will never experience is like that super athlete. Like Bo Jackson, Deion, Deion Sanders. Sanders. Yeah. They were, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, Dion, I mean, I would say most people just know him now as, the fucking Colorado coach. But yeah, people who don't remember him from the 90s. Dude, yeah. he there was a game that he played for the Falcons where he flew from the game to play for the Braves in the NLCS. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember that being news. incomprehensible right yeah. now. Yeah. I, actually, I don't know if he played, but he was he made the game and he was on the bench for it. He suited up. He did. Yeah. Wow. Just an insane thing to do. But yeah, Bo Jackson and Dion were two of those guys that were just superhuman no one's done it since right do you think michael jordan broke that bless you michael jordan broke that for any athlete moving forward wow maybe because he was like the best and then became a almost like bless you like a laughing stock overnight with the baseball stuff could have been yeah maybe yeah john elway was another guy he was drafted by the yankees 
Oh, really? We never played Pro no, Bowl, right? Yeah. No, but I mean, he's somebody who could have, and I, I mm. think Denver could have quite possibly let him. Yeah, Mahomes, I think he really pressed right? the issue. Baseball, football, I feel like it's the most common mm. dual athlete. Maybe because it's uh, you got a season in the middle. Yeah. Let me, let me extrapolate on this. <laughs> I think it's probably because ba- football's a fall sport. Baseball's in the spring. All right, you guys you spring forward. You spring forward, but you fall back. You don't hear about, like too many pro football players that have a curling background. <laughs> <laughs> Not this side of the Canadian border. Yeah. yeah. But going back to Jeff Perlman, Jeff Par- Perlman was a Sports Illustrated writer, and during the NLCS, he was tasked with writing a piece on John Rocker. Mm-hmm. By the he did it, he found him to be a very likable guy. Rocker seemed to like him. However, by the time the piece was done, the Braves had already been knocked out of the playoffs, and it just isn't that appealing to to run a piece on a guy that's just not playing anymore. Yeah. So that was in October. By December, his editor was like, hey, why don't you revisit this? Because I think you can get a lot more out of Rocker. Now that the season's over, people might be more inclined to read about this guy. So he met with Rocker. He flew down to Georgia, and the article that came from that just caused fucking shockwaves throughout the sports world because during his one day that he fucking spent with him, Rocker let it fucking rip. You said one day? One fucking day that he spent with this guy. And now was this like them sitting in a hotel room no. for the day? They were going around the whole, like he was going to lunch. They were them, driving around to, Georgia. So yeah. the first thing that they were going to do was they were going to go to a school for special needs children that Rocker was supposed to make an appearance at. Supposed to make an appearance. He did make an okay. appearance, but he was scheduled to make an appearance at the school for special needs children. And um, uh, the place was called Lockhart Academy. It was for learning disabled kids. And when he went along with him for that, and this wasn't in that article, but in a subsequent article, Perlman said that when he showed up, he had the school administrators play, I want to rock, before he came out to speak to these special kids. <laughs> and he sprinted to the podium. <laughs> Dude. Just pushing wheelchairs out of the way. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's really funny. That's awesome. That probably blew those kids' minds. Dude, and uh, it, yeah, in the SI article, he says that the kids go fucking wild. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's great. But he says, like, on the way there... um, he asked him if he if he likes giving speeches to kids. He's like, no, not really, but he does it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's admirable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I actually have a copy of the article. And Jake, would you mind reading some of the uh, uh, article with me? Sure, sure, Mike. Your parts She's are going to be trap. Your parts are going to be highlighted and they're they're uh, number coded as well. So I'll read the part before the highlight, and then you read the highlight. Correct. I don't want to say if these are words, I'm not saying Jake, word. Okay, I'm reading it with you. Okay, okay, I understand. I'll read the part before your highlighted part. <laughs> I, I heard what you said, Mike. All right, I'm just, and then you I'm read not the highlighted say part. Anything I don't want to say. Should we so, set up a second camera on Jake? <laughs> Can we actually uh, go Instagram live for this? Oh my god! All right, so Jake, I'm going to read the part before the highlight. You read okay. the highlight. It's nice that you used color printing. Okay, on yeah. these advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> Visit Orlando while just we're at it text only, Mike. <laughs> All right, so a minivan is rolling slowly down Atlanta's Route 400, and John Rocker, directly behind it, in his blue Chevy Tahoe, is pissed. Stupid bitch, learn to fucking drive! (laughs) Oh my God, Jay. That's actually pretty accurate for what I say all the time. (laughs) He swerves a lane to the left. There is a toll booth with a tariff of 50 cents. Rocker tosses in two quarters. The gate doesn't rise. He tosses in another quarter. The gate still doesn't rise. From behind, a horn blasts. Fuck you! <laughs> Rocker like yells, theater. flashing his left middle finger out the window. <laughs> so we're going to go on the okay. third paragraph here. With one hand on the wheel, the other gripping a cell phone, Rocker tears down the highway, weaving through traffic. <laughs> In 10 minutes, he is due to speak at Lockhart Academy, a school for learning disabled children. Does Rocker enjoy speaking to children? No, he says, not really. Being honest, but all all things big and small, he hates New York Mets fans, <laughs> sore arms, jock itch. The thing he hates most is traffic. I have no patience, he says. The speedometer reads seventy two. Rocker <laughs> in blue tinted sunglasses and a backwards baseball cap is seething. 
<laughs> so many dumbasses don't know how to drive in this town. He says, Billy Joel's New York State of Mind humming softly from the radio. <laughs> they turn from the wrong lane. They go 20 miles per hour. It makes me want, look. Look, look at this idiot. I guarantee <laughs> I can't say that one. <laughs> I guarantee you she's a... Uh, say it. Oh, I, I, what does that say? I can't read that Let one. Let me see. <laughs> I can't say that. You can, though. I can't say that. In my Jake voice, I guarantee you she's a Japanese woman. <laughs> you can so read the- specific. <laughs> read the rest, Jake. All right. Uh, a beige Toyota is jerking from lane to lane. The woman at the wheel is white. Oh, you mean? I'm not. No, I'm not reading that, Mike. <laughs> How bad are Asian women at driving? All right, next, next use, page, Jake. Th- this right. one's going to be all you. Oh, on, I mean, he's just simply playing guess the race of the driver uh, who's who's bad. That's we how people that. pass time in traffic. Mike, I, I can't say some of this stuff. <laughs> on ever playing for a New York team. <laughs> I would retire first. It's the most hectic, nerve-wracking city. Imagine having to take the number seven train to the ballpark, looking like you're riding through Beirut next to some kid with purple hair, next to some, I'm not going to say it. Queer with AIDS. Right. (laughs) Jeff. (laughs) Right next to some dude who just got out of jail for the fourth time. Right next to some 20-year-old mom with four kids. It's depressing. On New York City itself. The biggest thing I don't like about New York are the... (laughs) I'm not going to say it. Are the foreigners. Not the band. I'm not a very big fan of... Foreigners. (laughs) You can walk an entire block in Times Square and not hear anybody speak English. Uh, Then he starts naming a bunch of ethnicities. Asians and Koreans and Vietnamese and Indians and Russians and Spanish people. And everything up there. How the hell did they get in this country? Oh, my God. This is awful. Does he not understand immigration? <laughs> and, just, and he's with a reporter this whole time. Um, so I think it was 15 years later. All right. So that's the one that kicks off this firestorm regarding John Rocker. And scene. <laughs> He's eventually... You guys did great. Thank you very much. Jake did all the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, I see you highlighted that for him. <laughs> Rocker's eventually suspended for 73 days. Part of it's spring training, part of it's the regular season. For this interview. For this interview. Whoa. Yeah. Who was the MLB commissioner at that point? Bud Selig. Yeah. That's... Fucking weird. I mean, public outlash. You know, it's just, it's fucking crazy that you get suspended for half of a season for that. And f- there's so many fucking NFL players on video knocking out women. I know. And they don't I know yes. any fucking penalty. Yeah. I know. NBA too. Jesus Christ. All right. So Jeff Perlman writes a subsequent piece 15 years later, and he adds even more context to that day. Oh my God, he found the lost tape recorder. Dude. <laughs> oh, it was in my other jacket the whole time. In this in this later interview, Jeff Perlman states that one of the things that he did not include in the, the initial interview was some thoughts that John Rocker had about Disney. Whoa. He says, have you ever been to Disney? And Perlman's like, yeah. He's like, uh, did you know that Mickey, Donald, Minnie, all of them inside the costumes... All effing F words. Damn. So Perlman was not done with do you, Rocker. Do you want me not to say that word for the sake of you two? I would like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will not do that then. Thanks. I think people are going to understand. Okay. Also, he brought up Disney just to say this. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's insane. So he had his. Couldn't think of another way to say <laughs> effing Fs. Yeah. yeah. You can't just talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk about Mickey's sexual orientation. Dude, uh, why does he think that it wouldn't be like a, a gay theater kid in the in the costume? I don't know. Like, you think it's some fucking jock? I, maybe he thought it was an actual mouse. <laughs> you, know, you know those aren't even fucking rodents at all? <laughs> he was there one day. He was walking up to get an autograph that he takes. The, the guy takes the, the uh, fucking mouse head off. And he's like, my God, could it get any hotter in here? And he's just fucking shell shocked. Yeah, well, that's why you're not supposed to see the fucking characters with their hats off. Maybe that's why they instituted that rule. 
This is John Rock. John Rock. Yeah, yeah. They call it the Rock, the Rock Rule. Rule. <laughs> That's all right. Was that the most damning uh, addition from that second yeah. article? So that was pretty bad. But well, I mean, he's out of he's out of the pros at this point. He no. had probably he's still cooking. No, no, no. When they when they released that article fifteen years later. 15 years later. His, his career was done in baseball. But going back, all right, I might have advanced a little bit too far for your Not brain. a color commentator, that's for sure. Yeah, well, he comments on some colors. <laughs> um, another funny aspect of that day with Jeff Perlman, Jeff Perlman said that he makes that Disney World comment in the car with his girlfriend also there, and that they stopped somewhere where the girlfriend had to go run an errand, and when she got out, uh, Rocker calls it a side bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's a reporter in the car. Yeah, dude, he's the you man. You can't chill for one day? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no, no, that's not my girlfriend. She's going to get an that's abortion. My, that's my side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, here's 400 bucks. <laughs> Don't forget the 400 bucks cash. But during this time, when, when word got out that um, Jeff Perlman was the writer of this article, he was persona non grata around the league. People just nobody would talk to Perlman. They would not that. talk to him. There was one. Uh, I think it was Griffey who, or no Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield's publicist contacted him and said, "Like Gary, no longer has any interest in speaking with you." And Jeff Perlman said that I I had had a, a great relationship with uh-huh. Gary Sheffield up to this point, and he didn't necessarily believe the publicist. So he went. It was a Yankees game. He went up to him and he started speaking to him, and the publicist was just trying to run interference. Gary Sheffield really didn't give a fuck, uh-huh. but. The pub, it was the publicist's job yeah, to yeah. keep him away from. Uh, was but Sheffield a Brave at some point? Or was he, he was a Marlin. He was a Yankee. He was a Padre. I don't think Gary so he Sheffield didn't play was with brave. Rocker on the... No. But during this time, in uh, 2001, Rocker gets traded to Cleveland. And at this point, like, he's already past this prime. He's on the downward slope. 2002... Um, he gets traded to the Texas Rangers. He appears in like 30 games. And in 2003, he ends up with his last team, the Devil Rays, and he only gets in two games before he has to shut it down. Did he suit up the whole season, or did they release him? Before, like, I think he started having games. shoulder trouble. Oh, it was shoulder trouble. You got to wonder, though, if like the, the mental and emotional stress – of uh, everyone being so fucking mad at you after something yeah. like that, like affects your physicality. You know what I mean? Obviously, it wouldn't hurt your shoulder, but mm-hmm. I feel like it could. Affect- it would add stress on your body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In some way, I feel like it yeah, you're tense all yeah. the time. And that was something that he mentioned um, in regards to pitching in high school and why he might not have been drafted higher. He yeah. might not have been drafted higher one because everybody assumed he was going to go to Georgia to pitch, but also because control was an issue. And he said that he would get so fucking nervous. That he felt like he was losing his mind out there. On the mound. On the mound. Jesus. And um, I could see that him maybe being able to overcome that during the years where he was cooking. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. as soon as like this was added on top of it yep. where people just fucking hated him. Dude, imagine you're at the you're on the mound and you have to pitch to Ichiro Suzuki mm-hmm. during all of this. Like, I didn't mean it. Do you do, int- do you do an intentional walk at that point? Well, that would only be for a couple, maybe an interleague play. I don't know if they would necessarily have played the Mariners Yankees? in those seasons. Uh, if they or did. Rangers, no. maybe, right? Oh, uh, when he was on the Rangers. I think you would consider an intentional walk. You definitely wouldn't consider an intentional drive. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> 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 no, he had nothing. He did nothing. I'll bet you he thought Ichiro could fucking three sixty parallel park the way that motherfucker <laughs> could throw him uh, yeah. throw a baseball mm-hmm. and hit a baseball. He didn't say anything about Asian men, right? Driving, I think. I don't know. There was a lot of slurs in that to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was um, that was the twelve days of Christmas for slurs. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they printed all that. You would just, it would be so much funnier if it was just like, and redacted, and redacted, <laughs> and redacted. <laughs> Five quiz with it. Four female Japanese drivers. Oh, oh, he was still writing the, the 12 days of Christmas for John Rocker while I was saying my sentence. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Jake, don't cover your face like no, it's you in there laughing. Reveal yourself, you dirtbag. <laughs> You're gonna fucking suffocate in there, man. <laughs> what if that's how he died? <laughs> He died trying try not saying the defamatory <laughs> <laughs> words. Uh, this is actually a fun note about John Rocker. In 2002, as his career was winding down, I, 2003 his career ends, but in 2002, he's the star of a movie. American History X. <laughs> <laughs> the porno. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta History X, no. Um, <laughs> he's in a movie called The Greenskeeper. It's a horror movie. This sounds like it would be the perfect movie for a watch along for Little Stinkers. Yeah, that's the Greenskeeper. It is perfect. In uh, the trailer, they describe the Greenskeeper, who is a a guy who is tasked with taking care of a golf course. And in the trailer, they say that he was ban- badly burned in a gardening accident. Was he gardening with a flamethrower? Who knew fertilizer was so flammable? Was he trying to burn ants with a magnifying glass and forgot to move his hand as the sun went across the sky? Oh, my God. Um, He's not the greenskeeper, is he? He is. He's the number one He's the monster in the movie. And that's the only movie he was ever in. Yes. That's so fucking bizarre. We have to watch that. The only movie he was ever in, but um, he was in a TV show. Do you remember what TV show he was in? Friends. It wasn't Seinfeld. Will and Grace. (laughs) His head just explodes as soon as he sees Sean Hayes. (laughs) (laughs) I can't take this fucking city anymore. (laughs) And then Sean Hayes is like... Just Jack. <laughs> yeah, I was a fan. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. In 2014, he's on Survivor. As a regular, it's not celebrity Survivor. No, it's, it's just not people who got dragged through the mud who was former relievers in the MLB. No, initially they don't know he's John Rocker. <laughs> That's he goes on there. His, he and his girlfriend are both on Survivor. And um, people start asking. He lasts eight days. And uh, people start asking, like, uh, what's your last name? And he gives them some fucking bullshit. R. <laughs> it starts with R. That's all we have to tell each other. And eventually they figure it out. And uh, It's a hard R. So one, one guy. Yeah, Rocker, <laughs> Rocker with two hard R's. <laughs> That's John Rocker <laughs> with two hard R's. <laughs> I don't know why he signed that on all his autographs. <laughs> Could have just said it. <laughs> um. Uh, one guy out survivor recognized him. Yes. I had to be like, dude, I think that's fucking John Rocker. Will you go ask him what his last right, yeah. name is? I bet there's one guy wow. and then it's spread. And people are freaking the fuck out. They're like, can you believe what he said about this person and this person? He's, he's a bigot. And my God. Can you believe about it? What he said about <laughs> that queer with AIDS. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's, all downhill for him on Survivor from there. and He, he gets voted out, I guess, right? Eventually, yeah, but before he gets voted out, he has an altercation with an Indian woman on the show. Jesus Christ, that's not going to be good for either of them. <laughs> and he says, if you were a man, I'd knock your teeth out. Jesus <laughs> Christ, <Whoa>. John! <laughs> what the fuck, man? That guy has not learned anything. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. You can't do that. You can't sign up for fucking Survivor, dude. (laughs) Number one right there. (laughs) On camera, threaten an Indian woman. On the next season of Love is Blind. (laughs) John Rocker blinds an Indian woman. (laughs) But backtracking a little bit, in 2007, I mentioned that report came out, the Mitchell Report. It was uh, Senator George Mitchell. He compiled a report, an independent report, to present to Major League Baseball. And they named 89 players in it. And he was one of them. Some of the more prominent guys were Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens. um, They came later. Those guys came later. Mark McGuire. He was later as well. He actually got brought in. They were not in the original 89, but John Rocker was? Bro, in the initial one, there were 89. Uh, McGuire was not in there. Canseco was not. Yeah. Yeah. Bonds definitely was. Wait, who was hiding them? Congress? Bud Selig. He was trying to save baseball. Yeah. But eventually, because of that report, more and more people were brought in. And I do remember McGuire testifying, but I don't remember seeing his name on that report. So I wonder if 
maybe there was like an addendum to the report. But I, I know that was the silliest fucking thing of all time. A complete joke. It should have been handled internally. It had nothing to do with fucking congressional hearings. It struck me as the kind of thing that's more of a distraction from something else nefarious that the government was working on. Probably, yeah, knowing. In 2001? What my brain knows now. 2007. Oh, okay. Hmm. Wait, what happened in 2001? Financial crisis, 2008. Yeah. Boom. They were big short and then trying to take uh, Barry Bonds to the bank. <laughs> I think I've I think I've hit my limit of talking for today. In 2011, Rocker writes an autobiography called "Scars and Strikes." <laughs> That's an awesome title. <laughs> There's no way he thought of that. No. <clears throat> I looked into buying a copy. I wanted to read it for the program tonight. That thing ain't in print anymore. Uh, the cheapest copy was seventy five bucks. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, so, they know what they got. Yeah. I would like to get my hands on one, and that might be a. Uh, I might like to create an audiobook of it. You should do a jersey swap. Because you give them an arm perks, uh-huh. you get a book. Yeah, let's find out where that motherfucker lives. Dude, and uh, there's a Vice video where they follow him around for like a day or so. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think the chick's like falling in love with him. Oh, my God. Uh, this lady's following him around, and I think it's... maybe When the fuck is this video from? Maybe like within the past 10 years. He's in Cooperstown signing autographs. He's selling T-shirts that say speak English and old English lettering that he autographs. Wow. In old English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like half of his fucking words wouldn't even be legible. These days. <laughs> He's got a lot going on. In, in 2012, he starts writing for this uh, website called World Net Daily. Sounds reputable. It does, man. There's some very... Psych. <laughs> There's some very funny articles that he writes. Um, you can still access them from 2012 to 15 is when the articles are written. There are articles such as Speak English. Oh my God, he is really f- won't stop harping on that one. <laughs> America needs more mall cops like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Colon, why Paul Blart's life matters. <laughs> <laughs> um. My two-word love letter to the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a guess. That rules. Yeah. Nobody likes to fucking R- 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 I'm done. You're all right. <laughs> and then my personal favorite, water is not a human right. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> and th- these are accessible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hot takes. And you got them printed out for us to read, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I got to imagine. I ran out of paper. That <laughs> we can go to some library somewhere in Xerox John Rocker's book if you can't. I'll find eventually it. pay for it. I put a feeler out You'd rather the- do that than go to the Library of Congress with me? Bro. <laughs> He's not allowed in. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I value time as my. Um, most valuable com- commodity. I would rather spend 75 bucks than drive two and a half hours with me. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> that one hurts. <laughs> I would read it to you. That is not the deal I want. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Why did I ever learn how to read, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing pretty well for yourself, Mike. You're doing pretty well. Um, I took some screenshots of a Reddit AMA that he did in 2013. This guy will not stop. Dude. I think he asked you to read those parts because he doesn't think I can read. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in you, John. So there were some... Uh, the questions were kind of fucking lame, but he gave some pretty funny answers. Uh, there was a guy named Davey who was giving him a hard time, and he said, uh, it sounds like you may have some tendencies, Davey. <laughs> if you... <laughs> If you weren't gay, you would call yourself David. Not that that makes you a bad person. Uh, negative 594 karma. That's like what you say. Not that anything's wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another, progressing. another Redditor was given a hard time about some nonsense, and he says, that was a horseshit comment. You've been sitting there for 15 minutes trying to think of something clever to say, and that's what you came up with. Damn. That's the worst attempt by anyone all day. You must just have the worst social skills. Get him. Enjoy living in mom's basement until you're 40, beating off the Baywatch reruns at 2 in the morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Very specific. God damn, John. 
<laughs> Tell him what you really think. And uh, Cowboy Trav says, thanks for apparently inspiring the character of Kenny Powers. Other than that, you could fuck right off. <laughs> to which John Rocker replies, what have you inspired besides numerous abortions? <laughs> <laughs> What a burn. Oh, all right. I'm on Rocker's side again. And then this one might be my favorite. The Green Shepherd says, what did you do with all the batteries that the Mets fans threw at you during the 99 playoffs? Rocker replies, I gave the batteries to your girlfriend for her vibrator. Yes. I knew I was, it was either her mother's vibrator yeah, I was thinking mother. or girlfriend. Which one stings more? Why would you give them such a layup? I know. Seriously. What a dumb- batteries, obviously, yeah. they're going in a fucking vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly that dude's first AMA. <laughs> he's I like I well Yeah, I, yeah say it, Jake. Yeah, he's, he's pretty fun. I, are you ready to read the full no, article no, now? I'm not gonna I don't agree with anything he said, but I he's amusing. But he ended up becoming a real estate investor and that's a large part of what he does now. And I, I can't imagine he has anything to do with the the Can't face of the company or showing homes. I will a lot say of this. athletes do that. Like Brett yeah. Selleck is a big Philly uh, realtor. Yeah, dude, people buy from the Selleck team just to fucking get that picture with him. Dude, you know? people still love him, and uh, he also started a charity called Save Homeless Veterans, and he's the director of public affairs for that. Selleck is no, oh, the guy that we've been talking about oh, for a fucking hour. Yeah. Sorry. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. And uh, it really does seem like he's done a lot of great things for these people. During that Vice documentary yeah. I mentioned, they go to one of the houses that they have for the homeless veterans, and some of the veterans give testimonials about all that's been provided for them from this charity. So he's wow. doing a lot of good stuff. And even to the, aside from that, he's doing something where I can't exactly figure out what they're doing, but um, they're, there's this event that he keeps um, promoting on his Instagram and it's different events, but it's uh, for the same charity. I guess it would be, it's called laughs with legends where it'll be a comedy show plus a meet and greet with former athletes. And he's one of the guys it's like him. Do you remember a guy that played for the Cowboys, Ed, two tall Jones? No, I think it was like a seventies guy. (laughs) Um, nine. <laughs> yeah, too tall. <laughs> but there's a few guys that are, are notable that they go around and they they appear at these comedy show fundraisers. So who knows? Maybe we'll be a part of one of those one. Are day. they performing as well, or they just? That's what I don't know. Yeah. And they give a website on the flyers, but the web link is not active. Oh man. And they're fairly recent flyers. If you want to reach out? We'll do a. I'd love to do a benefit for some homeless veterans. You know, that's what. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. This motherfucker just wants Rocker's autograph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see it. I can he tell. He wants him. a rock. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what he's up to now. Uh, still looks great. Stays in great shape. Um, he's had a lot of hot girlfriends. Never settled down. No, still nobody just could tame fucking him. strange trim, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he's living the life. He really is. I encourage you to watch that documentary that I mentioned. I won't. <laughs> Vice one? It's like a half hour long. Oh, that's so long. And you it's think so, I can't read? You really do. I've never seen you read. You've never asked me to read anything. You that is true. I've never seen you read anything. Wow, this is incredible. You just drove 1,200 miles. You think I got there by... Well, there was a phone telling me where to go, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn right here, yes. Gun to your head. Could you read an obituary? <laughs> You know I couldn't. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have brought that up. You know I can't. I bet you could if you put. I wish I could boot you from here. You can boot me from anywhere, Mike. I need a <laughs> ET finger to boot you from here. <laughs> Treat it like a pop up's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something. Wouldn't that be a fun thing? All right. So John Rocker, he's doing well. Mm-hmm. God bless his heart. Everybody makes mistakes. Was the title of the article like off his rocker when they did it? <laughs> I was genuinely asking. You should have been a writer, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, everybody makes mistakes. That's my favorite Miley Cyrus song. Nobody's perfect. I gotta work it again and again. I like Wrecking Ball. That is a good one, too. Man, I wish she put out some pictures. She did. What? Yeah, I think I, I think, saw the I don't pictures. think she did it on purpose. Really? 
Yeah, there was a breakup, and right, that's when they came out. It could have been part of the fappening, or fappening part two. Okay. But yeah, that scratched my baseball itch. Did it? I still got done. You're done with the season. I'm not done. I um, you got. I watched Rookie of the Year the other day. That's a fucking good one. That is a good one. Salisbury steak, dude. uh, Henry Rowan Gartner's mother in that movie. Her son made his debut for the Cubs this year. Dude, that's so crazy. You said Get the yeah, fuck out of so here. That's so wild. That's fucking bizarre. All right, so that makes him what? Like less than 25? He yeah, came out yeah, after that. Or he was he came out. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> yeah. out till after yeah, that movie. He was released in uh, <laughs> 96 was the movie, I think, or 95. Dude, that's fucking bizarre. So that's 93. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Yeah, damn. Do you think when he got to the majors, he like pulled up a little thing on the glove and then saw his mom's name? You. <laughs> you know Daniel Stern directed that movie? No, he did not. He did. Dude, he's so he funny in did. that too. I know. You know why he 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 made himself stuck in all those places so he didn't have to be in all those scenes during the game wow. and back behind the camera. What a justification. Uh-huh. God. And uh John Candy's in it. From him yep. knowing him from Home Alone. Yeah. It's also a Chicago movie. And the guy that owns the, the toy story, the two toy store in uh, yeah. Lost in Manhattan is the owner, the wacky owner. That's and that's awesome. another Home Alone yeah. relationship. Wow. Um, Did not realize there was that many connections. Yeah. I read a pretty lengthy article about it. I was wrong. Um, what's the fucking movie where the kid takes control of the twins? Little Big League. Little Big League. The mom from that. Her uh, okay. son made his debut for the Cubs this year. Well, it has well, nothing to do with the twins then. So not this. nearly <laughs> as monumental as I thought it would be. And look at all that Googling he did. For Speaking him. of grooming <laughs> children for pro athleticism, that's a... what I don't remember what that mom looked like. Was she a curly hair, redhead bitch I believe she like was a uh, curly brown. Like that? Yeah, I knew yeah, curly okay, bitch. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was old curly bitch. Oh, curly bitch. <laughs> oh, is that old curly Ashley Crow bitch? Dude. Coming to the plate, number 32, curly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Man, I mentioned how much that rookie card goes for. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. She's uh, a grade A bitch. Also, pretty bizarre, but. Yeah. I don't remember that movie as well as I remember the other one. Ooh, I do remember Jonathan Silverman being an in, in, in infielder and in that was he first base. Then they got the uh, the nice song during the montage when they're getting towards the end of the season. They start winning big. What's that uh, doo wappy song? Mentally, he's in 1995 right now. He's... Oh, 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 oh. I don't remember oh, that. Oh, oh. Yeah. Little trip, trip, trip. No, it's, uh, yeah, run, no. it's run around Sue. That's Run Around Sue. No, was run I around doing Sue. Run Around Sue? No, you song is else. Run Around Sue. Yeah. You think anybody's listening at this point? Come quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but my itch has not been scratched. And um, I got to kind of, but here's what I want to do. And this might just be wishful thinking because things didn't end the way I wanted it to with the Phillies this year. I did not fulfill my baseball fantasies that I wanted to fulfill this year. And no, Jake, it wasn't getting double teamed by Bryce Harper <laughs> and Bryson Stott. I think Stott's the hottest, too. He, Next to Bryce. Bryson Stott always looks like he just saw a murder. He's got a little Dax Shepard in him. Yeah. But so, I just love a blonde mustache. Maybe it's because I'm unable to grow a dark mustache. So I have to like a blonde mustache mm-hmm. because of all the time I spend in the mirror crying. <laughs> <laughs> Blonde, describing a fellow with a blonde mustache <laughs> seems like a, a pop-hop euphemism. <laughs> oh, yeah. tr- Troy, the, the fellow with the uh, blonde mustache? You mean the middle infielder with the blonde mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that guy's button with runners on. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to get double teamed by two of the hottest Phillies. Then what are you going to do? I would like to follow the Phillies next year. You're going to go to some away games? Yeah. Damn. That's pretty cool. I would like to just make it like a... Yeah, they're going to London. They're playing. No oh, way. There's two games, two games where they're playing the Mets in London, and I think Jack June. the Ripper. Oh, I, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? I ain't going back, but yeah, that would be fun <laughs> as hell. I can't go back after what I did last time. What'd you do? What'd you do last time? I was just. I don't drink like that anymore, but uh, you know, I would black out, smoke opium with a bum, <laughs> and then 
take a double decker bus back to God knows where. I didn't know where I was going. And then you get off the bus and you just scream weed until somebody is concerned for your well being and they they sell you weed. What was opium like? It was pretty cool. It wasn't my first <laughs> dance with with uh, with the black bitch, uh, <laughs> but it was a strange one. Rocker would have loved that term. It was Kicked pretty crazy. Down the bus, screaming, "Whoopi Goldberg! <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg!" <laughs> oh dear, fella, seems like you're on the need of the black bitch. I think I don't know. I, I might have given the guy like you know some money, and he was like, "Do you want some opium?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then I had no idea where my friends went, so I was just in this like alleyway but you know like uh that one bar in philly that's kind of down an alleyway mcgillan's mcgillan's yeah. old yeah. yeah it's like that kind of place so it's active mm -hmm. but you're like you're still next to a dumpster and yep. a bum mm -hmm. and uh like a f either a fucking fire alarm or a bomb scare happened and all these clubs evacuated oh. and i'm kind of just sitting there and slow watching everything happen in slow motion <laughs> as i'm smoking opium with a bum mm -hmm. pretty cool mm -hmm. honestly maybe i will go back you guys want to come to London with me? I would love to, yeah. I want to go watch the Phillies there, man. You know, I was just going to go up to see a Mets game, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Wouldn't it be the f funny to see the Fanatic have the same experience you had? <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Get up the top of a double-decker bus and just... <laughs> <laughs> is he asking for weed? <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't opium. <laughs> Oh, dude! Did you see the uh, the guy with one tooth? I did. I I thought he was good vibes. Yeah, I thought so. Too. That was the kind of thing that it really turns out he's good. a fucking jinx. Yeah, I'll tell you what the <laughs> real jinx was. It was the Sixers jersey. I don't think Bryce Harper should have worn the fucking Sixers jersey. Did he wear that to the, the game last yeah. night? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I asked you last night between going in Xfinity Live and going out. To smoke cigs, I was like, I think we have to watch them on defense inside. And I was like, are you superstitious at all? And you said, no, I'll follow you wherever you want to go. In regards to my placement, I think okay. with a man with direct impact on the game, yes, you, you okay. cannot, yeah. you know, that's like uh, wearing a fucking well, t-shirt with the challenger. I on mean, it. dude, they had John Cruck throughout the pit first pitch. Last night? World Series, yeah. Really? Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, no, nobody from the fucking 93 World Series should be allowed in the stadium. Yeah, you might as well have had fucking Jared Fogle throw out that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> With a big pair of pinstripe pants. <laughs> you, did Jared Fogle play first base for the Phillies <laughs> in 1993? We can still edit Wikipedia to make that true, right? I would like to have a catch with somebody. I uh, I was thinking about bringing my glove and a baseball to that little Halloween party I'm going to with my buddies on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But now I'm thinking I'll bring a football instead. Yeah. I got one under there. I know. Well, you don't need everybody to bring a glove in that case. And then yeah, I'm the also one with a glove. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just fucking catch it with your bare hand, pussy. Uh, I just every I think everybody's gonna have. Baseball sadness in their heart. You want to keep baseball right. going in your heart for another week, you said. But, I, yeah, I don't need to infect anybody else with it. Cue a horrific fart. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the Field of Dreams, too. That's cool that they... Did they play a game this this year there? Last yeah. year. Last year, last so year. So they're not, they're not making that an every year thing? That was just a special so, occasion? Yeah. And it was... I, I couldn't believe they did it. It was yeah. so fucking cool looking. They had the yeah. Little League field and the was fucking pro awesome. field. Yeah. Yeah. They had all the dead kids come out of the outfield. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> Did Danny Almonte die? <laughs> this is the worst seventh inning stretch I've ever been a part of. <laughs> They're eating the fans. <laughs> Next up to the plate, y'all clean up hitter, Jean Benet. <laughs> no, don't. No, no. Calo. Lefty. Did I died? <laughs> In this story, did I died? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. Yelling kumquat from the roof, baby. From the mountaintops. <laughs> if anybody's a new listener uh, and you're not familiar with the last 15 minutes of an episode, this is where... Me and Jake are dying to go to Wawa to get a gobbler. <laughs> and Mike holds us hostage. But it is, I'm having fun. I, I I just kid. I just want to keep talking baseball, man. Me too. Let's keep yeah. talking baseball. I do. Was it you that I had the conversation with yesterday about the last time I had a catch? No. When was the last time? Dude, it was maybe 10 years. And Damn. it was somebody who is a sworn enemy right now. Oh, boy. Oh, no, it was Blizz I was talking to. Okay. I threw the ball around a couple years ago. Got it out. Got it nice and long. Was fucking airing it out with my buddy. Yeah. It was fucking fun. Threw That's up, the best. Threw some pop-ups. Threw some grounders. I love hearing, some dubs. hearing that pop. Mm. Dude, I remember my favorite thing as a kid. When your dog's at asshole. <laughs> <laughs> His glands get busted by the vet. Something got lost Dude, when, I turned, when I turned left. Yeah. Mike started a completely different conversation. Yes, he did. He's, he's popping Ooh. anal glands. Yeah. What was I your know, favorite thing I, before? Uh, uh, such a dick move. Like you dog ever, asshole ever island it? over here. <laughs> <laughs> Someone throws like one like just out of your reach, right? Mm. So then you go get it, and then you just fucking. Hoofing over their fucking head. I'm sorry, man. I just I keep. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go get that pussy. I mean, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do it like time and time again. I just, you know, my hand. I, oh, yeah. Fuck, dude. I keep sailing it over here. Yeah, you. sorry about that. <laughs> I can't find my one glove. I feel like I've been looking for it for years. It has to be in my mom's basement, but it's a outfielder glove. The only glove I have is a first baseman's man, mm. and it just kind of feels weird to have a regular. Catch with the first baseman sometimes? Yeah, you feel like a sex offender. You know what? Maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go door to door identifying yourself as a first baseman. <laughs> That's a pinch kidder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Better than a kid pincher. Oh, um, relative to this, and now that uh, I'm throwing out jokes that never worked. Uh, do you? Here's another joke uh, that bombed every time. Um, do you guys want to know the worst part about child pornography? Jesus Christ! Um, give me, just give me 15 seconds. <laughs> I feel like I've heard you do this. It's probably so fucking bad. I don't want to remember it. At the end of every video, when the kids sing the cleanup song. Is that a Barney reference? <laughs> Is that some bullshit Barney shit, dude? Are you doing baby Barney dude. shit in here? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, are you really singing baby songs to me right now? <laughs> Did you ever see a goose kissing a moose down by the bay? Down by the bay. What a little man, go. <laughs> what was that from? I feel like there's like a puppet video for that, right? Could be. It's like a We Sing in Sillyville kind of thing. I feel like those kind of songs would get recycled through every fucking kid's show that you'd have to watch with your kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing that I'm so glad about my kids being older is not being subjected to that shit anymore. You're in the heat of that probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, I am. Just being awake at like 630, still a little bit drunk. <laughs> and having you never went to bed? Up. No, it's like you ha you get woken up. Yeah. Not you have to brother. be up. Got a wife for that. <laughs> We're not married. I had one. God rest her soul. Are you breaking news right now, Mike? No, she just needs rest. She worked very hard today. <laughs> <laughs> She's really tired, man. You'll see her when you go upstairs to the bathroom. God rest her soul. <laughs> She's very tired. It does seem like what kind of means. It seems like a nice thing to say to somebody after they've had a long day. Yeah. Just boop them and say, God rest your soul. Please do that at my funeral, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have a living funeral just for Mike to come and <laughs> Dude, we should do a living funeral. That would Mike. be fun. That would be yeah. fucking awesome. That would be fucking great. <laughs> Happy birthday in heaven <laughs> on earth, <laughs> little stinkers. <laughs> Dude, all right, yeah. Uh, let's set that. It. Let's set that now. Twenty five hundred patrons. The live living funeral. funeral. We're having a living funeral. Yeah. I love in it. In whatever city has the most. Votes. That's a okay. great idea. Yeah, we'll we'll go to the masses on this one, mm -hmm. and 
it'll be our mass. And what do you want to do? All right, so we're in coffins there, and <laughs> no, that's not how a living funeral works. Oh, <laughs> I know. I, I think we should be in the coffin. Yes, in this yeah, case, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I think we should be. Maybe they could resuscitate us somehow, or maybe we have dancing African pallbearers. I just want someone to jump on the my coffin. That's all I want. <laughs> and also, I want no. it to be open. I want to clarify. I want it open. Yeah, the Starbucks manager, <laughs> whoever owns the Starbucks near you. <laughs> Chick, no! <laughs> We're going to close! Yeah. You're going to be carried by six DoorDash drivers. <laughs> I can't well, feed my family I can't anymore. believe it took an hour for him to get to the gravesite. <laughs> your ghost is going to be haunting your neighbor's ring cam. <laughs> you was a good man. He now would. that Mike has given his suggestions, I don't think I want to do that as the next uh, <laughs> bonus or the next uh, incentive. Yeah, it's scary. When his wheels get turning, they get oh, yeah. scary it's fast. Just, uh, you say a thing, and then he turns it into a completely different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Scarier, yet more entertaining. Yeah. I have what doctors call terrible social skills. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would be so funny if a doctor actually diagnosed you with that. You were just there for a fucking broken finger. I was like, by the way, sorry to tell you, but you make people uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm going to put a cast on it, not kiss it. There's a team of students behind him writing all this down. Oh, so I got a team of students behind me, motherfucker. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 30 missing children. <laughs> Just dark circle candy-eyed children. <laughs> I got this from Field of Dreams. <laughs> They're eating the fucking tongue depressors. <laughs> Was there a popsicle on this ever? <laughs> Where did all my cotton balls go? <laughs> Dude, that, that would be a uh, League of Their Own song for the dead kids. This used to be a popsicle. <laughs> used to be. <laughs> this used to be my childhood creamsicle. Okay, now we're talking. Nah, yeah, another baseball movie. I don't that was know if a I great one. This up. I watched that last year. It was actually just on the other day on cable. That's so good. I got emotional after I saw it in the theater. Same. I cry every time. It's so sad. Yeah. When you realize fucking Dugan's dead. Um, wait, what? <laughs> or maybe it's when Stillwell says that his mom died. Yeah, that part's very sad. Yeah, but um, I always get emotional when Marla Hooch gets the black boyfriend. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what an appropriate episode for you to say that, dude. During. She sang to Nelson. All right, they were soulmates. <laughs> um, at the end, when they all go to Cooperstown mm -hmm. and they're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. The lady that plays older Gina Davis mm. looks like uncanny yeah. like Gina Davis. And for years I was like, "Is was that just Gina Davis in makeup? That's what I thought. Because for years. all the other actresses are so drastically different, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's clearly not Madonna. That's clearly not Rosie. Rosie! <laughs> like, fat Rosie, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that clearly wasn't her at the end of the movie. That fat bitch had to get a fat old dub double. double. Um, I sorry, love, I just started working on my intro. It's just been announced that uh, John Del Calo versus Rosie O'Donnell has replaced <laughs> Naeem Ali and Jamar Neighbors. Uh, That's tough when uh, you need a fucking Rosie O'Donnell, when you're a Rosie O'Donnell stunt double. It is, Mike. I'll tell you, it's been very tough. That's fucking Tulip O'Donnell. But yeah, I, I looked that up. And I was blown away. That woman, they just found a fucking doppelganger that was 40 years older than her. Wow. Blew my mind. Am I crying because of the movie? Oh. Or am I crying because Mike won't let us leave? When the black lady gets <laughs> the ball and she throws it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. what? What's coming up next? Oh. Nice Not going to be a black bitch in baseball, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, no. This is only my fourth beer. Bro, uh, did you want a copy of that? <laughs> <laughs> but there will be black fellas, is what I was going to say. Is that the Daniel Day Lewis movie? <laughs> there will be That's black a Daniel Damn, Damn Daniel Lewis movie. I drink your Damn. grape juice. 
Dan, <laughs> Dan, Our producer's about to sign <laughs> off, dude. <laughs> I didn't hear what, wait, I don't want you to repeat it. <laughs> but I heard juice, and that's all I need to know. I think we've done enough damage for yes. tonight. Yep. I've drank two of these, and I am feeling good. Wild up. Join us on our next Patreon when we uh, do a live <laughs> apology letter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be submitting this to the paper uh, so we can uh, untarnish our reputations. This is uh, part of the Mitchell Report addendum. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're just channeling the spirit of Ty Cobb. And I said it because there's not, there was no more female baseball. Mm. Yeah. It's only. Digging a hole, buddy. Big old lesbians playing softball. <laughs> Cut the feed. <laughs> Cut the fucking feed. I can't stop. Is there a pull string on the back of me, Jake, that you keep pulling? <laughs> 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 oh, man. I was, all right. Could the three of us be an entire team of lesbo softball players? The three of us? Yeah. Fuck no. no. In softball? Yeah. No. No, dude. Yeah. One pitcher, one infielder, one outfielder. Who's catching? Softball rules. They're going to destroy us. Three versus nine. How's it even feasible? Come on. Why would it not be? We got ghost runners. Are we playing ghost runners, Mike? No, I'm just talking about. All right. All right. We could. We could each be. Um, That's a pitcher catcher and a first baseman. That ball right, goes I, anywhere else. <laughs> we are screwed. I didn't really think this one through, <laughs> but I thought it sounded good because I think highly of us. I really think each of us has what it takes to beat an entire army <laughs> of uh, Melissa Etheridge heads. Uh, dude, they would they would cast me immediately. I would become yeah. their leader. I, yeah, after I, our first at bat, Jake stays in the field. <laughs> <laughs> or stays in the dugout. Yeah. Dude, it's like Field of Dreams. Like, Do you want to come with us? <laughs> wow, I've not only I've not seen Bull Dorm or Field of Dreams. He's Arch- you haven't seen full Field of Dreams? <laughs> He's Archibald Moonlight Ma'am. I, and that's you want to come? You, you want to come with us, babe? <laughs> what a reference you just pulled, dude! That was wow. that's why I don't understand it. <laughs> You've never seen Field of Dreams. Mm-mm. That yeah. surprises me. It's, you Did upset lights the lights, off? yeah? Oh my god! Yeah. You upset the lights for that. So yeah, next year I think they need to be done with that song. The Phillies can't do that song anymore. Yeah, so that's we're done. done. Yeah. Even our set is turning off. Our yeah. set's like, <laughs> yeah, right, we're done. yeah, God's shutting everything down. <laughs> There's going to be a lightning strike in about three minutes while we talk about... they can't... This got to be done. That didn't fucking work. Yeah. No. I liked oh, it. Major League. Yeah, that's a great... Mm-hmm. That's a great I movie. do... I, I like fun. what I see with the with some of the other prominent teams from the playoffs. I think we need a Cuban maniac in the middle of the lineup. Yeah, we like... Yeah. Rojas is our only... Uh, exotic figure on the lineup. No, we had... So, uh, uh, Pitchers, yes. Pitchers, we do, yeah. but I'm talking but like bat. fucking Jordan Alvarez. So um, what's the Altuve. fucking the Texas Ranger guy? Yeah, it um, looks like it, he hits women as hard as he hits baseballs. It's not Garcia, is it? He was a. Uh, it might be, yeah, might yeah. Be. It is. It's. I can't remember his first name, but it, his name is Garcia. Garcia. That can only be five or six possibilities. <laughs> Cut the fucking. Wire, cut it. You guys Turn it off. You think mischievous on Halloween? <laughs> Who else do you think should have a league of their own? <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> Thank you guys for watching another episode of Little Stinkers. Honestly, these two episodes tonight were jam packed with laughs. I've been cracking. I had the a whole ton time. of fun, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bangers. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Yeah, uh, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for being a patron and supporting us and making all this possible. If you haven't joined Patreon yet. Join us at patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L I L S T I N K E R S. You get every episode early. You get all the extra shit we do. Like fucking. What do we do, Jake? Yeah, we got a movie watch movie along. Watch along coming up. Book club. We're yeah. doing fuck it. You get ad free episodes. We're also starting something new in November, which is going to be the true crime roundup where we're taking a bunch of the most fucked up, funny true crime stories from the previous month and speaking on them. 
Yeah. And any other weird shit we do. Like we crafted a letter to the lovely Jody Arias last month. We wrote that together. We mailed it out. Any other fun shit we do on Patreon. And the most fucking best thing of all is our upcoming road trip videos that Dude. we filmed. Yeah. They're, They're really to, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just the, the few clips that we've gotten Gorgeous. blew my damn socks off. Yeah, this is, what's uh, Madonna's character's name in uh, League of the Own? Uh, all, all the Way, way May. May. Um, these episodes are All the Way May, the previous field trip. Or, or, what are or what are our videos? Murder field trips? Murder, yeah. Our murder field trip videos are Marla Hooch's. <laughs> so. We love Marla. Marla's great. But yeah, this but is all going to be on Patreon. May. And uh, you can sign up for four bucks a month. May, <laughs> but I want Marla up to bat. Yeah. Four bucks a month, $40 for the year. And uh, yeah, it supports us and allows us to keep doing this, which we have a ton of fun doing. And I can't let these two leave. Did you know Madonna's going on tour? Oh no, she looks like. <laughs> Wait, didn't she cancel her last tour because she looks so much like a, a cat now? <laughs> <laughs> she looks like one of those people that gets like tries to look like a cat, you know? Uh, she went to the vet. Uh, she got fixed. She's ready to go. She just got her cone off. Eight more She's lives. She's ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Delco. Come to St. Louis in December, December 1st and 2nd. I will be at Helium Comedy Club's garage. It's where they keep the park cars. They're going to close it and they're going <laughs> to run a car. And we're all going to fucking die together. Please come out. <laughs> From what do you got, buddy? Yeah, uh, go to YouTube, type in a soft one and Jake, uh, and you can watch my special. It's free. It's old. Just give it a, you know, just let it play full volume at any of your public libraries. <laughs> and uh, thank you to everybody who's bought my book on Perks. Uh, I'm doing something special uh, at the end of this year. Uh, anybody who buys a copy of On Perks from the first day of sale up until December 31st of this year, you're eligible to win a grand prize uh, to spend the weekend with me here in Delco. It's going to be a very special weekend wherever the fuck you live. I'm going to pay for your airfare. I'm going to pay for your hotel to come here for a weekend where we're going to go to my favorite pizza place. We're going to go on a Philly true crime tour with these two. Uh, we're going to have a screening of my favorite movie, MacGruber, with my buddy Tim Butterly. Um, we're going to piss on my fifth grade teacher's grave for making me feel bad about myself. Is she the one that called you old tons of fun? That is her. Yeah. Oh, man. You might want to take a piss on that grave, too. You're going to want to take a shit on that thing when I tell you more about this old bitch. Uh, we're it's also a- we're going to go to a Phillies game with Ryan Shaner and Chris Wood. And awesome. whatever the fuck else we can pack into that weekend, we're going to do. It's your weekend. And I can't wait to pick some lucky devil to come spend the weekend with us. And uh, that's going to happen on the first episode of Dad Meat of the New Year. But grab a book if you haven't already. Everybody who orders up until December 31st is eligible. I'm going to pick a random order number and make your motherfucking dreams come true. Onperks.com. And uh, go see Johnny Delco in St. Louis. Go see Jake at his home. Jake, do you want to give out your address? (laughs) Sure. 1600 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. All right. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. See you next time. See you guys. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Nail stinkers.